man who lived on an island once. We fell in love one night under the stars, tangled up together on the slope of a boat launch, the waves lapping at our toes and daring themselves to come closer. When we made it inside to say goodbye, it was like I was looking at him up close. The faded maroon of his Chuck Taylor high tops, the rich brown and green pattern of his silky shirt with the sleeves rolled up. He wondered aloud if the magic would still work in here. I asked, should we try it again? And he slid his hands around my face, kissed me, and sat me on the countertop as the kiss took over us. The solidity of space and time was irrelevant. We existed somewhere else. A sacred space where the air is always salty, where the birds fly ahead every morning to seal whatever magic took place the night before. Our faces impossibly close then, I said, yes, it still works. He used to tell me of his dreams. He was a dream traveler. In one, he figured out how to tilt the world upside down and fall upwards. It was bliss, he said. We used to traipse all over the island, laughing through the forests. One evening, we stumbled onto the beach to watch the sunset. He stood behind me and wrapped his arm across my chest. It was in that moment that fate immortalized our love, locked it away to last forever and play out in another dimension. After the sunset, we played on the dark beach, sat facing each other on a log that must have cradled so many other lovers. And what happened next, I'll never be able to fully explain. We watched each other's faces change in the moonlight gasping, sputtering at each other. I watched him age 40 years in front of me, his misty blue eyes gazing at me from his 65 year old face. I saw into the future and there he was. He said that for him, my face morphed into something like a wild cat, a panther or a tiger. To this day, I still don't know what to make of that. I told him that I saw him clear as day as a 65 year old. He laughed and said, I mean, are you down? The thrill I felt in that moment as he casually toyed with forever. I was so distracted, I forgot I had taken off my rings and set them on my coat. I grabbed my coat as we left, flinging my rings into the water, not noticing until the moment we pulled in the driveway. We packed flashlights and ate a snack and headed back out into the night. Upon our arrival, the first ring was waiting for us on the sand, glinting in the moonlight, its grooves mimicking that of the driftwood next to it. I slid it onto my finger in disbelief, my heart already aching, feeling certain we would not find the other one. I'll never forget searching the water that night hands passing over seaweed and stone, the moonlight playing tricks on me, making me think I was just about to find my ring, always on the edge. That's what our love was, achingly anticipatory, all the potential to swell into something great, but then crashed onto shore like a wave, dissolving into nothing more than a saltwater memory. I looked across and caught that precious moment watching someone lost in focus, unaware they are being watched. So studiously, he searched for my ring. Barefoot in the water, jeans rolled up to his calves. I was content then, knowing we wouldn't find the ring, knowing I might never see it again, but it was okay because I had found someone so beautiful. Love, love with sandy brown curly hair, Love who made me laugh my real laugh. Love who played the piano with such skill he could fill a room with sound and transport it elsewhere. Love that left clues. Strangers looking at us and smiling, almost as if they knew who we were, joyous to see we had finally found one another. 
Love who sent me flowers on my birthday. Love who hid postcards in my books. Love who rented a metal detector and returned to that beach days later. Drew a circle in the sand for every beep until the metal detector died and he was left with 18 circles in the sand with nothing to do but dig up each one. And on the second to last circle, a few inches deep, he found my ring. The thick metal handmade by my sister with the word unmastered written on it. Unmastered, a mind of its own, ownerless, at sea. Days later, we were on the phone and I admitted to him how much I missed the ring, how I dreamed that it had returned to me. And he told me then he wanted to surprise me, but he had it, he found it. And it was then that all my inklings that fate was at play were confirmed. My feeling that the us now was connected to the us in the future were right. And yet I was wrong. As is fitting, our relationship ended over a phone call and I never saw him again. But somewhere in time, we are still together. Sometimes I brush up against the dimension in which we are together, haunted by memories I never actually experienced. Us in bed together, laughing. He wears a faded green t-shirt, blue plaid pajama pants, and a wedding ring us in the front yard, him holding one of our daughters as the other runs around. Now, when I remember him, when I remember us, I am not sure if he was real, a man made from fog, holding his pattern yet shifting slightly, every second threatening to disappear altogether. How could I tell you how the story ended when it didn't really end at all? rather dissipated, like fog when you try to reach out and touch it, or a wave crashing on a beach. It is strange to understand that fate will lead you in and out of different loves, and the plans she has for you reach far beyond ships passing temporarily 